Thank you. Thank you. As a final year bachelor student in my home country, Nigeria, I wanted to design and build a robotic chalkboard cleaner, an automated system that will clean the chalkboard while the teacher steps aside from inhaling the chalk dust. When I presented this proposal to my supervisor, his response was, oh no, it will never work. <laughs> Sir, with your supervision, I believe it will work. Super what? Who will supervise you? Not me. He concluded. For him, it will never work, probably because it did not just fit into the conventional research program he was familiar with at the time. As far as he was concerned, comparative study of the performance of transistors or diodes was a more realistic bachelor project. I reluctantly changed my graduation topic. I graduated and I left the university. But the desire to translate the acquired engineering skills to, to solve real-time societal problems never left me. Afterwards, I got a good job in a mobile telecommunication company. And my job function was to maintain the network availability. My job routine was already predefined. All that was required of me was just to squeeze and fit in as a new employee. But despite all the amazing opportunities and good benefits that came along with the job, I lost my motivation in no time. I was completely demotivated until I found a new meaning, a new meaning for my job role. I imagined a pregnant woman in intense labor pain, making every effort to reach her husband, but cannot. She could not because there was no network signals on her phone. The husband returns home late at night to find the lifeless body of his pregnant wife. Of course, that will be reported as another poor healthcare management system and all of that. But as for me, negligence in the line of my duty has caused the lives of the mother and child. So beyond office politics, beyond competition among co-workers, even beyond the good salaries and the allowances that came along with the job, I became super motivated beyond fatigue because I could connect my job to a real societal need. But afterwards, I felt to even make greater impact in society, I needed to get involved in research. So I quit my job and came to Deft University of Technology to research about something. Who knows? Maybe my robotic chalkboard cleaner will finally work this time. But then I was really determined. I mean, I was super resolute that I was going to do science for the benefit of people, for the benefit of society. However, I discovered that conventional research program has some silent expectations that can unconsciously, not my word, unconsciously impose lim limitations on scientists or researchers themselves. 
Take, for instance, a newly employed PhD researcher is immediately overwhelmed with the expectations like getting four publications in peer-reviewed journals in four years. He is instantly confronted with the reality and the pressure of submitting his dissertation to the thesis committee in four years. So what does he do? All he can think of is to build his experimental setup, get data, develop algorithms to process the data, publish his results, defend his thesis, graduate, and go. And as soon as he's gone, the entire experimental setup in most cases is taken apart and stored up in a box. The developed algorithm, in many cases, are not reused. And for me, mm -mm. doing research this way was not satisfying at all for me. I did not care about the achievement of an elevated academic status. I just wanted to do fundamental research that will not only translate to publishable scientific result. So, I chose to research my research to make direct impact on society. And I researched my research in four steps. I would like to share with you this. Step one, I defined my research based on real societal need. My older brother, Bumi, died as a result of untimely diagnosis of a treatable disease. Approximately 435,000 people died in 2017 because of malaria. Is it possible to develop a diagnostic solution that can provide early detection of the malaria parasite, a disease that kills one child every two minutes? I asked myself, will I be fully satisfied to see one life saved, one child, one pregnant woman saved, even at the expense of my PhD degree? And since the answer to myself was an emphatic yes, I decided to define my research based on this need. And guess what? It worked. I mean, it, it worked. In 2016, our first proposal, Optical Smart Malaria Diagnosis, was awarded 240,000 euros by the Deft Global Initiative. And from this funding, I hired myself as a PhD student. <laughs> it worked. It worked. I mean, it worked. Step two. Find people of similar passion. So I was thinking, how far can I go in four years if I find people with similar passion and work with them as collaborators and not competitors for the common good of the society? It turned out that sitting in a building two minutes away from our lab is this amazing, passionate guy, probably more passionate than myself. We teamed up together, and in two years, we translated our methodologies, our proof of concepts, to functional prototypes that we can bring to the field. 
Step three. Step out of the lab. Interact with stakeholders. Validate your assumptions and return to the lab to optimize your system design. When we interacted with medical experts on the field, I discovered that the cool stuff I was doing in the lab and I was in love with in the lab was nothing to them. They were more interested in knowing how robust is our system against dust, how robust is our system against temperature variation, against humidity, how long can our system survive when electricity is cut off. So with this information and this feedback, we came back into the lab and then we could optimize our system and develop optimal devices for field use. Finally, the fourth step. Look for opportunities. Take a step of faith and seize them. At some point on the project, I felt we need to expand this research beyond malaria. So I started looking for funding opportunities. And aside the small, small funding we got here and there, in 2018, we got 1 million euros to expand our research beyond malaria to other neglected tropical diseases with a consortium of five research organizations in three countries. The most interesting part for me was when I got some funding I applied for from the Netherlands Scientific Research Organization. And I went to the faculty administrator to arrange the budget and to commence the process of hiring a researcher to work with me. She did not believe me until I gave her the award letter. And when she took the award letter, she looked at me and she said, I'm sorry, Tokwe. I have not seen a PhD student in this faculty double as a budget holder. Guys, it works. It works. Just get out of your comfort zone. Look for opportunities. Push the assumptions aside and take a step of faith. It works. Now we have these functional prototypes. But how will they really complement the existing diagnostic procedures already in the field? I'll show you in a bit. Conventional malaria microscopy requires an expert to look at thousands of blood samples with the microscope. This procedure is labor intensive, prone to human errors, expensive, and not readily available in remote areas where they are needed the most. Our microcube malaria diagnostic solution provides automated detection of malaria parasite with minimal human intervention. The system outputs the amount of parasite, and in this case, seven. Chistosomiasis is a parasitic, neglected tropical disease that we also looked at. Stool or urine samples can be examined microscopically for parasite eggs. But diagnostic efficiency is limited by complex sample preparation, intensive human analysis, and costly diagnostic device. Our method requires no sample preparation. It provides automated sample analysis and is low cost.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In August 2018, my colleague Jan Karedil and myself were in one of the best universities in Nigeria presenting our work to professors of engineering, deans of faculties of engineering. In fact, the, the former president of the university was there. And suddenly in the audience, an old guy stood up and he yelled, how can I be a part of this? I am a professor of material science. From his eyes, you can see it was evident. And from the sound and the desperation in his voice, you can feel that while we were presenting our work, he was busy in his mind, re-searching his research to find contributory relevance in the healthcare sector. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, have you been doing the same thing over and over and over again and yet expecting a different result? May I challenge you to pause for a while, to rethink, reevaluate. Re search yourself, your relationship, your career, your research, and start making impact in the society. Thank you. Thank you very much.